In this tutorial, we're going to look at the idea of diffraction. So diffraction is what happens when waves bend when they are moving through a gap or around a boundary. And um, I'll give you two examples uh, that, are, that are quite important that you might be expected to draw up in your exams. Uh, the first one is what happens when you have waves moving through a gap. So imagine you've got a situation like this, where we've got um, a gap like that, and we've got a waves that are moving towards that gap. And I'm being very, very careful here to show that the, the wavelength on this side is, is constant. Okay, so we've got a wavelength here, and they're moving in this direction. Um, so what happens is when they, they move through the gap, they will diffract, and that means that they will actually start to bend. And to demonstrate that, you would draw a picture like this. And what's really important when you draw this, and I'm trying my best to do it here, is that you show the waves bending, but the wavelength remains unchanged. So here, and I haven't drawn this very well, but you must show that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. When waves diffract, when they bend around boundaries or through gaps, the wavelength remains the same. So whenever you're drawing diagrams, make it very clear. Um, probably your diagram is going to be rough like mine, so you're going to want to probably draw on, um, label it like I have to show that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2. So what happens if we make the gap bigger? Well, if we make the gap bigger, and we keep the wavelength the same, the only difference is, is that the waves will diffract less. So we have our incoming waves, and when they enter the boundary, they'll diffract, but they won't diffract as much. And that's what I'm trying to show here. So again, like last time, the wavelength on this side of the boundary is exactly the same as the wavelength on the other side. So lambda 1 equals lambda 2. But the difference is, is that for the first diagram, we have quite a large diffraction. On the second diagram, the waves bend, but they don't bend nearly as much. So there are two ways you can look at it. A wave will diffract more if A um, the gap is small, okay, so you have waves, a certain wavelength coming into a small gap, that'll give you a, a smaller gap will give you a larger diffraction than a bigger gap, or B, you could have um, the same size gap, but you have different wavelengths, so um, a, a wave coming in with a large wavelength would diffract more through the same gap as a, or same size gap as a smaller wavelength coming through the same, the same gap. So the amount of diffraction depends on the size of the wavelength compared to the gap. The smaller the gap, the more it will diffract. We can also show similar diagrams for what happens when we have a barrier like this. Okay, so as waves come along and approach this barrier in this direction, What's going to happen is, is that the waves, they tend to bend like this. And again, I'm trying to be careful in showing you that the wavelength remains unchanged. So lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 1 equals lambda 2. So in this case, if we um, took the same barrier, but this time we have a smaller wavelength approaching the same size barrier, a smaller wavelength will show some diffraction, but it's going to show less diffraction than before. Okay, so lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2.
wavelength 1, wavelength 2, and the key thing is they're both equal on both sides. Okay, so in your exam they're going to ask you questions, um, very basic questions would involve drawing pictures like this, and um, more complicated questions are going to ask you to explain how it works. And here's an example. Imagine we have a hill. Alright, here's my hill. And on the other side of the hill, we've got a beach. Okay, and the waves are crashing in on the beach. So you've got this sort of roaring sound of the waves crashing. Um, we've also got some, um, some birds, some seagulls. Alright, and they're squawking away, making that horrible high-pitched sound that they make. And we've got someone on the other side of the hill. Now this person um, can hear can hear the roaring of the the ocean, the waves crashing, but can't hear the seagulls squawking. And uh, how can you explain that using physics? Well, we're going to use the ideas of diffraction to explain this. Let's look at this idea. The waves are roaring roaring along at a very low frequency. Okay, so we have a low frequency crashing of waves. This means they have a very large wavelength because V equals F lambda and the velocity is fixed. Why? Because the velocity is the speed of sound and the speed of sound, whether it be for the seagulls or for the, um, the ocean waves, will be the same through the year, assuming it's the same temperature and um, all that kind of stuff. So. The water waves have a low frequency, a low pitch sound, which means a large wavelength, whereas if we have a look at the seagulls, the seagulls are making that horrible squawking sound, which is a high frequency, and therefore because of V equals F lambda and the V, v being constant, if they have a high frequency, they must have a, a low wavelength. So therefore we can, we can draw a picture then to illustrate what happens. Um, let's look at the seagull, the, uh, first of all look at the, uh, the ocean waves. The ocean waves have a large wavelength, which means if I'm drawing the ocean waves as the sound waves, what happens is they tend to diffract, they tend to bend as they move over the hill. So therefore, the person can hear the sound of the ocean waves. The seagulls, however, the frequency they're making is much, much higher, which means the wavelength is much much lower. So these will diffract, but they won't diffract as much as the larger wavelength uh, water waves crashing on the beach. As a result, the um, the waves generated by the or the sound generated by the um, squawking seagulls is actually going to move or bend over the hill, but not bend enough for the person to, to hear it. So the way to explain this up to an excellence level is to mention everything I've said here in this, in this uh, little demonstration, this little problem. So the idea that um, because the water waves have got a, a much lower frequency, that means they have a larger wavelength because the velocity is constant in the V equals F lambda formula. And the larger the wavelength, the more diffraction. Okay, so large wavelength equals greater diffraction. That's probably the most important concept you need to take away from this. Whereas compare that to the seagulls, seagulls are a high frequency, which means a low wavelength, and a lower wavelength will mean less diffraction around the hill, less bending. And that's pretty much it. Diffraction done.